Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to our panel, Empowerment Through Games and Animation. Um, we've got a great group of people here today. My name is JJ Bouchard. I am the Patient Technology Manager at CS Mott Children's Hospital. Uh, pronouns are he, his. Uh, and the group that we have here today, uh, three different groups, uh, Extra Credits, CS Mott Children's Hospital, and Child's Play, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Hi there, I'm Kristen Freitag. My pronouns are she and her. I'm a child life specialist at Michigan Medicine. Hey everyone, uh, my name's Connor. My pronouns are he, him, his. I am a patient technology project manager at CS Mott Children's. Hi everybody, my name is Matthew Kroll. I am the showrunner and narrator of Extra Credits, also pronouns he, him. Hey all, I'm Jeffrey Zatkin. I'm the studio director of Extra Credits and I am also a he, him. I'm Kirsten. I'm the Philanthropy and Partner Experiences Director at Child's Play Charity, and I am she, her. Awesome. Thanks, guys. And so, like I said, we're all kind of from different areas, but we are all really dedicated to using uh, video games and animation to, to um, help educate people and help them cope with the hospital experience or other things that they're going through in their lives. And um, before we really get into all of that, I just kind of want each group to kind of identify talk a little bit about uh, what they do and, at their institution and, and what their roles are. So Kristen, if you kind of want to ex explain like what Children's Hospital is and, and uh, what a child life specialist is, I think there's probably a lot of people out there who maybe aren't aware of what, what your role is. Definitely. So I'm a child life specialist at CS Mott Children's Hospital, which is part of Michigan Medicine. We're a hospital in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, we service families and children from all over the country. My role specifically as a child life specialist is to help children and their families cope with being in the hospital setting. I work in a radiation oncology clinic, so I work with children who are coming to our clinic to have radiation treatment as part of their oncology course. Um, so we do a lot of preparation, a lot of child-friendly language to help explain what to expect each day that they come to the hospital. So it's a little less intimidating, a little less scary. And we also try to infuse as much fun and play during their time at the hospital to make it that much more child-friendly and that much less scary. Awesome. Thanks, Kristen. Connor, do you want to kind of describe your role a little bit? Yeah, so I am part of the patient technology program, which is underneath Child Life. So what we do is we use video games and the newest technology to go ahead and achieve therapeutic, uh, educational, physical and recreational goals that the therapist kind of put out. Or we're just sometimes there just to have fun uh, and kind of, again, make the hospital less scary while connecting with these patients in a passion that they already have. Uh, so a lot of what I do is either set up events for kids to come hang out, which right now is a little different, but at least other than that, we go ahead bedside and hang out with the kids. Uh, we have a go-kart that we use and we bring it in. And then depending on what they want to do, what they'd like to do, or what they're kind of used to doing, just bringing that normalcy back into their rooms. Awesome, thanks Connor. And so I'm lucky enough to work with both of them. I let them do the hard work of describing their positions. Uh, my role is I'm a, the manager of the patient technology team and the therapeutic gaming program that we have at CS Mott Children's Hospital. Um, I helped found that program uh, with the support of groups like Child's Play and Extra Credits, and I spend a good bulk of my time reaching out to different uh, donors and, and groups to um, kind of see what else we can do to provide kids with all of the experiences that Kristen and, and Connor are um, providing. I've also worked in both of their positions. I was a child life specialist for a long time um, and also a patient technology manager. Um, so moving on, let's, let's uh, hear a little bit from uh, Matt and Jeff about extra credits and what you guys do. Matt, want me to describe the channel? You want to describe what we do? Go for it. Yeah. Excellent. So, hi, I'm Jeff again. We, Matt and I, um, help run a channel called Extra Credits. It's a YouTube channel. We have over 2 million subscribers. We've been operating for about 10 years and we make original animated videos that help teach people. And we have three main shows that run at this point Extra Credits, which is about video games and game culture and video game design. Extra History, which helps teach history in more of a storytelling way, and Extra Mythology, which kind of takes older myth mythological tales and helps tell them in a slightly more modern setting. And again, all is animated shows, all written, animated, produced, edited, you know, by the Extra Credits team. So we're an animation, educational animation studio whose distribution is through YouTube. 
and our main person that everybody hears is Matt. Yes. Uh... Um, I, as, as I said before, my, my roles are of, um, of showrunner and narrator. So basically, I am the person that is taking all of the talented work mm -hmm. that all of our talented team does and putting them together and putting them sort of in the right spot. A lot of scheduling. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, uh, getting to read the phenomenal scripts by our writers and then work with our artists and get things through the gate. And, of course, mm -hmm. uh, when, when the cases come up, uh, getting to work on uh, phenomenal projects with all the people like that we have right here. Uh, because, I mean, our, our tagline is because learning matters. And uh, that, of course, goes through a lot of different spaces, as do our shows. So um, anytime that we can team up with like-minded folks trying to do good for people, uh, we're always super psyched to do that. Oh, and actually, I forgot a quick thing. So previous to this, I ran a video game research studio for a decade. And for a decade before that, I was a video game designer. And so I've been running small creative teams for over 20 years, and YouTube is very much a small creative team for what we do. So I kind of help run the channel, and Matt handles everything that goes through production. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, Kirsten, you want to kind of explain a little bit what Child's Play is? Sure. So um, I'm Kirsten, and I get to do all of the fundraising. So for our Child's Play team, really, we take the generosity of the gaming community, and we get to turn that into the power of play in our children's hospitals and supporting groups like um, Connor and JJ and Kristen through through gaming and understanding that gaming can be therapeutic. Um, so I get to do all things working with corporate partners, working with um, employee giving campaigns all the way to individual donors or cool ideas where JJ and Connor and sometimes Kristen will hear through JJ, hey, we have this idea, we want to do this and trying to find one of our partners or our groups that can help make that happen. And um, I feel like it's always where we get to bring the creativity and the magic into the children's hospitals because I come from that world. That's where I was at for a number of years. So um, really making sure that that we can not only give in-kind donations um, through gaming, you know, carts and systems like Connor talked about, all the way to making sure that they have an annual check to purchase all the things that they need. And then the Gaming Technology Specialist Program, which JJ created, and we were like, that's rad. How do we get on board with that? And now we have supported over 20 in children's hospitals across the country. Yeah, it's been pretty amazing to see what Child's Play has done and what they've inspired other charities to do. It's, it's really the lifeblood of what keeps our program alive. Um, so it's, it, it seems it's kind of a natural, you know, thing for Child's Play and hospitals to connect and for us to, to reach each other. But what I'm really curious to kind of find out and what maybe our audience is interested in learning is, you know, how did we get connected with extra credits and how did Child's Play get connected with extra credits? Do you guys kind of mind talking a little bit about that? Yeah, I think first I, w I would say, I know Jeff, um, you actually have a great story about your connection to Child's Play before I talk about how I met you guys. I feel like that totally is first. Sure. Um, so actually years ago, um, one of the studios I used to work at was up in Seattle. It was Monolith Productions. And while I was there, DigiPen offered, um, asked me to come do speak um, at one of their student things about it. And I met... Um, Mike and Jerry there, who'd also been invited to speak. And we were fascinated with each other because I read their comics and they, I don't think they'd ever met a live designer. And so we chatted and I also met Robert Koo there. And I stayed in touch over the years. And probably seven or eight years ago, Robert Koo and I had breakfast um, at um, a conference. And uh, he was talking about the Child's Play Initiative and how they were buying games to give to hospitals. And I was running a research studio at the time on games. And I said, how do you pick your games? And he said, oh, we, you know, kind of look, see what we think would be good. And I said, I think we could do some research to figure out which games are the most effective for certain types of, st um, certain types of people in hospitals based not on their actual thing, but on their symptoms. Are they woozy? Are they in pain? Do they need calming? And so we started a multi-year initiative to research that and help provide better data into child's play through my old company, EDAR, on this. And that continues to this day. And so that's kind of how I got initially got connected, um, just through an interesting breakfast and an interesting DigiPen talk. Yeah, and, and that created the Therapeutic Game Guide, which mm -hmm. was incredible. Which we use every day and share with 
with our child life specialists and with our physicians and with our parents and family. So that, that's really cool. I didn't realize that connection. That's awesome. That was, yeah, I said breakfast meetings are great. You know, <laughs> get your coffee, figure out a thing that might help some people. I mean, all good. Well, it's interesting too. Uh, so, I mean, I came to uh, both extra credits and child's play again years ago as a, as a fan of the organizations. Like I, before I was uh, involved with extra credits, uh, I, donated to the first uh child's play like i was like i was trying to be as actively involved with that sort of like the beginning side of just giving where i could and then when i finally got involved with extra credits and i found out jeff's story and then this whole connection sort of happened it was just a very nice uh it's always great when you when you get to meet people you respect and they're awesome uh and so that was just a i don't know i always like that this all worked out well, and we were, it's actually, I said, it's our anniversary because we met at PAX last year for, I'm newer to the team. And so we went and met at a Starbucks. And I think we both went to different Starbucks initially in downtown yeah. Seattle because it's super easy to do. It was at do. the same <laughs> shopping center had two Starbucks. And right. each one, we each went to a different Starbucks because we didn't know there were two Starbucks in yeah. the same shopping center. Yeah, and really just got connected and mm -hmm. you guys were just so generous in saying mm -hmm. you want to do something philanthropic and great mm -hmm. um, with your channel. And so we started brainstorming about our hospitals mm -hmm. and then we always, we have, I mean, 180 amazing hospitals and programs, but we also have a few that we know time and time again, every mm -hmm. ask that we have, they deliver and they tell that patient story and the mission. And so um, that's how we brought JJ in. And that's actually really funny because the first time I ever met anyone from Child's Play, I was actually brought um, to my first PAX about seven years ago to speak on a panel um, with uh, Zach Weigel from Gamers Outreach. He invited me because he's a local, it's a local charity here and he brought us out there. And that's when I met Child's Play for the first time. And then they came back to our hospital about two years later doing a, a big um, uh, tour giving uh, to hospitals all over the country. And at that time, my role had evolved from a child life specialist to what Connor's role is now as kind of a project manager trying to just make all the video games in the hospital work. And that's where, you know, I think it sparked the seed with Child's Play to be like, oh, we should fund positions like this everywhere. Because my, my position and Connor's position were entirely funded through donations and through different organizations. Um, mine was uh, from a charity called... Um, uh, I'm not golf classic and uh Connors is through child's play. <laughs> um but that's a but really yeah, important thing to yeah. uh, point out really quick is that a lot of the charitable contributions you hear about to these things, you know, they actually result in jobs getting created that can, you know, then full time help people out. And mm -hmm. I think that's not always a thing people realize when, you know, it's like cool, you know, I'm giving to help a thing. You know, this is concrete seeing what some of the things you're giving towards actually help do. Absolutely. Yeah. Our whole quarter one grants are focused all around capacity building. So whether that is actually funding a position and working with hospitals to say, we'd love to do a two year transition and then have them become part of the hospital infrastructure. And we have seen so far with our 20 game techs, 100% have turned over into full time positions within the hospital. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and we were able to grow our program from just one position that was philanthropically funded to now we're under an operational budget, and we have two more positions that were assisted through Child's Play. And what's really cool is we're seeing positions like ours sprout all over the country. Um, that some are funded by Child's Play, but then other organizations, just like Child's Play, was inspired by a charity that supported my my position. Like other organizations are seeing what Child's Play is doing, and they're helping because Child's Play can't put all these positions up by themselves. So. It's really cool to see how different charities and different groups are working together. Um, and, and a big part of that is because Child's Play and PAX, the PAX community are bringing all of us together. And I, like you said, like those morning coffees, you know, I go to PAX every year and I sit down and I have another coffee and then I come back and the hospital keeps letting me do that because every time I come back, we have a really cool new project or um, all, of our, all of our technology is still completely supported through donor funding. So it's, it's these fun projects that we do with Child's Play and Extra Credits and other groups that keep them going. And so with that, I'm kind of interested to hear a little bit about how Child's Play and Extra Credits um, got together and then decided to come and work with us because that was a, a kind of a surprise and it, it is a kind of an interesting story within itself. 
So that's uh, the Because Games Matter series. Um, want me to cover it, Matt, or you want to start on that one? I mean, I could, I could just do the beginning of it, and we could, uh, I'll, I'll toss it back. Uh, sure. Be because Games Matter is something that's been going on for a while, and we always just look for stories of uh, uh, that how games have affected either an individual or a community in a, in a positive light, in a positive way, oftentimes mm -hmm. not heard about. Um, it... Uh, we had a few sort of how it, I believe how it started was like just knowing people in the industry or, or, you know, friends of friends of friends that had mm -hmm. interesting and compelling and moving stories to, um, to sort of further the idea that games are more than just entertainment. They are art, they are therapeutic, they are a, a, a many things to many different people. Um, and so uh, we were always on the lookout for new and compelling stories of that ilk. And then, and, and then Jeff, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And actually, even backing it up a little bit. So every December for the past, right, at least four or five or six, somewhere around that year is um, extra credits has um, dropped a couple of their normal shows that they would be posting, uh, not taking sponsors or advertisers and instead takes these stories that Matt's talking about and turns them into animated videos. Right. And with them, we'll go partner basically with a charity to help promote that charity in addition to this. So we'll find a really good story and try and partner that with it to raise awareness on the charity and help bring donations towards that because uh, thanks, or December is a great um, month for giving. And so part of what I do every year then is I go out and I look for different groups to partner with. And because it takes a while to get through the process, if you think about this, we have to find the group, the group has to find somebody with the right story, we have to get the story written, bring it in and then get it narrated and animated and you know everything put together this can often take months so when i was at pax or when i go to pax every year i try and set up a whole bunch of meetings of potential people to talk to to see if this would be interesting and uh, one of them was with child's play because i have a long history with that and then child's play was like oh we might know some people it was cool it was i mean it was eric and i sitting there talking about yeah. it and it was like, well, this could be about child's play, but really mm -hmm. what matters to the gaming community is that truly the power of play is in our children's hospitals. And so that's mm -hmm. where we started brainstorming like the gaming technology specialist program and how do we get the word out there? Because when you think we fund 20 of the 25 positions, mm -hmm. you know, right now in the world and that we oh. know of anyway for children's hospitals. And so it's like, we have to get more momentum around this and we have to keep doing this because we see the impact that all of you, not just child life, um, but the gaming checks that come in and support child life in that way, the impact every single day that we hear about, or, you know, Connor will send me little snippets of when they're doing Lego robotics or they have their arcade and, and then it really kind of spurs what else can we do? And what I love is when we do one project like this and the generosity that extra credits had and the little bit of hounding they may have had to do with me that they're being so generous and not saying is like, we need that, we need that. Do you have it? Are you ready? And so um, connecting everybody and, and really that relationship that now has, has spurred into something even more exciting and new. Yeah, yeah, well, I think that that was pretty amazing for us because you, you came to me and I think it was like early November or mid November and we're like, Hey, we have this really cool group that wants to like do a piece about you guys. And I, it, that's like crazy time for the hospital. Like Kristen can say like, we, we've got so many events going on and so much stuff happening and, and we get a lot of emails about cool things that are coming up. And I was like, well, yeah, sure. Have them come over. They can view one of our mod arcades, which is something cool that Connor throws every other Saturday uh, pre COVID where all a bunch of kids would come into a room with, we have these giant drop down screens, kids play video games, and it's a great event. We invite guests all the time to it. Um, they like community partners come and help us out. Um, and they were like, well, this is actually a cartoon. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, and it was really funny for me because I'd actually seen extra history on YouTube a few times and really enjoyed it. I was a history major before I got into all of this. And, um, but I hadn't put two and two together just because of life. And, um, so I quickly like wrote up and they were like, yeah, just describe your role and how you got to it. And I ended up writing up my life story because I was kind of basing it off of what I had seen um, in your previous videos um, because games matter. And I was like, wow, this really speaks to like my story. I am a type one diabetic. I was diagnosed when I was seven and I was actually uh, spent a week in this hospital that I work at. Um, and um, 
I kind of shared my story with them and they were like, great, thanks. And I didn't hear anything for about three or four days. And then all of a sudden they're sending me back pictures of me and my friends and all these people that I described in the story. And I was like, oh my God, I, I had no idea. This is like a dream come true for me. I'm going to be in a cartoon, but also how sure. good they did. Animated pictures. Sorry. No, we, we weren't Animated talking pictures. through your Facebook. Right. And taking yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> Well, that's the cool thing, and, and, and we're, we have some images coming through, too, or you'll see, like, there's a great picture of me. I sent a picture of them, and then they, they like, made a great little cartoon version of me, and people were like, wow, you even got your, like, little white bristles right, and it was, yeah. it was really funny. Uh, also, real uh, quick, shout out to our wonderful artist of, of your episode and many of the, uh, of the uh, Because Games Matter episodes, Scott DeWitt. Uh, he yeah. he uh, and our entire art team, but uh, yeah. he, he's great at taking actual photos of people and turning them into our bean art style and mm -hmm. i think it's sort of the perfect mix of like little touches and simplicity that kind of let you be like oh yeah that's that's me <laughs> right yeah right right and it, i mean it was just really cool you guys you 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 show the evolution of my life and how i got to this as a kid who had diabetes and then became someone working in the hospital with other kids with different diagnoses and using video games to help us through the whole thing. Because video games were a huge part of my life and my coping mechanism and how I help kids cope as a child life specialist and now as a, the manager of the patient technology program. But then what was even cooler was not only did you make one cartoon for us, but then you were like, well, we want to do two. And I was like, okay, well, you want to do one about a patient? And you're like, yeah, that's what we wanted, not you. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so, so Connor was working with a patient, and I'm going to let Connor kind of describe his story a little bit, but he had a very special kid that he'd been working with for a while. And um, Connor, do you want to kind of type? Like, I, I just went to Connor and said, hey, do you have anybody who might be interested in this? And then Connor said, oh, I think I have the perfect kid. Um, oh, yes. Connor, do you want to kind of describe that for absolutely um yeah when jj kind of pitched the idea to me he's like have you heard of this and like he was geeking out i will tell you 100 percent. he was geeking out in his office he's like just just wait like have you seen these videos they're so cool like, cool <laughs> and i kind of like uh caught up and read over them um but when he came up with the idea of like do you have a patient whose story that you like really want to share um instantly i was able to think of jacob um so jacob's story is on the extra credits youtube page um Jacob is hard of hearing, so he is a deaf patient. He's one of the first patients I ever worked with. He is literally the first patient I ever worked with. Um, JJ got to shadow me on that one uh, <laughs> from, from my first start. And over the year, we really got to bond with each other. And the one thing working with him was really like learning the barriers of communication. So the idea of creating an animated video that would tell his story in a way that he doesn't have to worry about that barrier anymore, um, especially because he does give back to his community. He does care. Um, he made kind of like a soft spot on a lot of us who have worked with him just from his general compassion. That same year we made this video, he came back and donated his socks to the entire floor that he spent his Christmas on last year. Um, yeah, like he's, he's just a genuine good human being. Um, so instantly just went ahead and reached out to mom I was like hey like this is what this group is doing I thought Jacob would be an awesome participant is this something that you would like to do like is this something he would want to do um, and they're completely on board um, so Jacob kind of told his story and mom wrote it all out mom was with him kind of diving through it and it was a lot of like communication back and forth like through email over the phone talking to mom who talks to Jacob, who talks to me. So it was a lot of like communication just to get it all put together. Um, so that way he was able to tell his entire story and kind of his journey with cancer and how he was able to overcome it and really show that like message of hope uh, that he kind of leaves with every person. So being able to actually put that into a video and see it like come to life. And like I said, like that, the animation's amazing. You even have his, like his expressions with certain things. Um, that really take heart to you. Uh, one thing that was really big with Jacob was introducing him to Cosmo. It's a little robot that has like a facial recognition. So as soon as it sees you, it lights up, it changes its face. And of course, like with folks who are hard of hearing, like your facial animations are what make that communication happen, whether or not there are words spoken. Um, and that's one of my favorite things of working with them is I don't have to say two words and we're already like having straight up communication, just acting around with each other. Um, so with the robot, he was able to, once he realized like you can do like text to speech, 
um, as soon as he got it and it started like, he was like, like looking at it, like, did it work? And I was like, yeah, it's working. Um, he went ahead and he wrote, I love you, mom. And the robot said it. And it was like one of those moments that like, it stuck in my heart forever. It was literally the first patient I worked with and got to see him kind of like develop over these years. Um, but really seeing the compassion there, I was like, yes, Jacob's the one for this video. Let's do this. Um, and you all made it happen. Um, and thank you for putting Cosmo in the, in the video too, because well, that, that made my heart sore. Well, it's funny. I, 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 it, I actually didn't know the background about Cosmo and mm -hmm. I, I knew it had to be something special because of the way that, the, that they wrote the script. Mm -hmm. uh, the, Cause Cosmo's mentioned maybe two or three times. Mm -hmm. And I was Cosmos. like, I, I guarantee that this piece of technology has yeah. some sort of special underneath meaning. That's great to know. I didn't. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yep. Uh, Cosmo this went is the to fun every thing for us. We get to find out the backstory around right. the things too. <laughs> yeah. No. Cosmo went to every infusion appointment. Um, so he was with them every time he was in stay, or like staying in in house. Uh, Cosmo was there with him. Uh, so we kind of have little Cosmo battles. Uh, Cosmo also does fist bumps, and like you can interact with them in different ways. So when Santa came around, so every year Santa comes and visits the hospital, and they go room to room. Um, Santa went into his room the day that he found out like Cosmo could do all these cool things and the first thing he did was turn it around so Cosmo could give Santa a fist bump um, yep <laughs> and that's how he wound up getting his Cosmo actually from like a generous donor who was like this done here here's a here's a Cosmo for yourself but Cosmo's his dude that little that's robot great. that we use at the hospital just to have fun with it this is why we need more gaming technology specialists you guys yeah. this is why this is why I work so hard to bring in more money. It's, it's those little moments. But yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's kind of Jacob's story. Um, added on to his amazing story that he tells himself. Um, yeah. That was actually something really, we were really interested. Not just the ability to have somebody who normally would be using sign language, you know, have their story told in this way, as you said, was just really amazing. And it does, it speaks to the inclusion that you can kind of put in with animation where you can simplify, you know, we can take a large story and hopefully, you know, boil it down to, here's a story with an actual through line, help pe get people interested, let them know about it and let them know again, things like this exist so that we can raise awareness and bring, you know, more interest, more dollars, more volunteers to do it. And, and it was such a natural, it was such a wonderful natural flow between, um, between JJ, your story, and yeah. the, because because that was again yours was sort of like a full circle, mm -hmm. like uh, yeah. just like from from someone who benefited from things like this to someone who is provi helping to provide the things mm -hmm. that you benefited from, and then to go from that to Jacob, uh, right. and, and to and to hear just sort of uh, I mean mm -hmm. for lack of a better term like the next generation of people who are who are having their lives bettered by all of you folks working and all of the folks mm -hmm. donating. It was just such a wonderful mm -hmm. flow for, our, for that year's stories. Uh, it was great to see. We usually don't do two with the same group, but we'd also never had the opportunity to kind of take one of, you know, here's somebody kind of doing the operations level of it, but here's somebody kind of coming in at a patient level from it. And that's why we thought it was such an interesting thing. And because uh, we usually actually do one to two videos a year. Last year we did three and we'd been planning to do two. <laughs> This was just the extra one. We were like, we'll figure out how to do a third yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was really impressed with the, the turnaround time too. I mean, I got you a script and in two weeks you guys had a cartoon, mm -hmm. a full cartoon. And then, and then on top of that, you had mm -hmm. Jacob's cartoon right after mm -hmm. that. I think Jacob's actually came out on Christmas day. Yep. I yep. believe. So I mean, talk I... about an awesome Christmas present for that kid. And, and it, it was, for me, it was really impactful in that, you know, I started as a kid here and now I'm, mm. I'm a professional here. And, mm. and that's kind of what we try to do as patient technology specialists is show mm. kids, like even when you're here, you can still grow and you can even like some of our kids actually have jobs, like they're working from their rooms. You know, we've, we've taught them how to use things like Facebook and YouTube and mm. um, different social media platforms to, to grow their brand, if, you know, because they can't go to school like other kids. And so yeah. have Jacob have his own cartoon and ABC like oh I might have a you know a future in robotics or in cartooning or something like that like that was just yeah. really really cool for them and you may not have even realized it but the photo where all of us have like our little blue hair going on with them mm -hmm. um that's literally the entire team of patient technology 
uh, that was JJ's or not JJ, it was Jacob's last day of infusion um, mm-hmm. or chemo. Yeah. So we went in, I actually came in on my day off. That's why I'm wearing jeans. Sorry, but literally just came by <laughs> to say hello and say, congratulations. We all dyed our hair blue and walked right in. And we wound up playing Uno, not even video game related, but just all of us there together in that space from the entire year of all of the in and outs of the hospital and the treatments, uh, just to kind of have that full celebration in whole. So you literally got the entire, not only JJ's story and Jacob's story and patient technology at Mott, but kind of those, and the next generation, which is us, you know, thanks to, yeah. thanks Child's Play, <laughs> yeah. like yeah. literally being able to produce us to continue to do these things. Yeah. So. And, and that kind of leads into the next one. So Kristen's been kind of quiet because she was, during all of this time, Kristen and I had actually been working on a different animated video that wasn't meant to go on YouTube or anything like that. It had a very uh, specific uh, medical purpose. Um, and, and we'd been trying to go the cheap route. And I'll kind of let Kristen explain what she was trying to do and then how we were so lucky to have had this great experience with extra credits to then ask for your help. So Kristen, why don't you kind of tell your story about, about the radiation video? Happy to. So for about two years, maybe even a little longer, I had been working on a project um, with some help from JJ to create a animated video that I could use as a teaching tool for our kids and our families who come into the radiation clinic. Um, The goal was to have a short, maybe five minute cartoon that was realistic, that could give kids a understanding of what they're going to see, what they're going to hear, what they're going to feel as they go through their radiation journey. But it was delivered in a very child friendly approach. And so JJ helped me connect with um, some animators, some volunteer groups that were in our local community. Um, A lot were students, and so that was just a little bit of a slower process with all of their schedules and everything that they had to navigate. Um, So then COVID came around, and unfortunately, the volunteers and everybody had to just kind of hunker down. So the project got dropped, and JJ had just had such wonderful experiences with extra credit and told me how quick and wonderful these cartoons came out. Maybe if we ask real nice, (laughs) we can make a connection and maybe pull off a third cartoon. Um, So we started talking with Jeff and we reached out to some donors to pull in some resources to create this video that we've been was kind of turning into a passion project over the last couple years. You got to mention the voices in it, too. Yes. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) there's a lot of steps to creating this cartoon. Um, So initially, I had written a script that described each step of the radiation treatment from the very first day of consult, coming to the clinic, meeting the physicians, to the next steps, all the way through the last celebration of your last day of treatment. I had that script then reviewed by some patients that we had that actually had completed their radiation treatment, Um, some young children that I was working with. And then they offered to be our voice actors in the cartoon. So the voices that you're hearing and the stories that are shared in this cartoon are actual stories from children who I worked with in our radiation clinic, which made it very special. Um, And we were actually able to have some feedback from those kids too of how much this meant to them to be able to prepare other kids and to feel like they were doing something that could benefit others who are going to be coming in for their radiation treatment. But, uh, yeah, then, we, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead, Jeff. Well, I was just say when you guys reached out, um, it was one of those ones we were really super excited about this, and Matt went and rearranged feels like half of our backlog to be able to bring up like okay we got a writer we you know we're going to need a sound editor for this to get some of the voices in he needs to do the vo we need to free up one of our artists you know get some editing time because now we need to edit matt's voice in you know just but um actually matt how many shows do or how many things would you say we're usually working on at a time uh mm. anywhere between from script to post 
15 to 27, 28. I think 28 at one time was the most at one right. point, which we try not to do because yeah. that's too many. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. I, because yeah, this is, you know, videos take months between, you know, they go to writing, voice, writing, voiceover, sound edit, animation, you know, regular, you know, that they all go through steps. Where as I, I introduced this as a production, a, you know, animation production house, which isn't far off, you know, our distribution is YouTube but we make animated videos. And so this was one of the things when you guys said, hey, we've been working on this for years. I was like, well, we knock these out, you know, in a pretty <laughs> quick order if we can actually get everything in. And it was something that when I heard about it, when Jeff sort of passed it off to me, and then uh, mm -hmm. Kristen, when we were working on the script, uh, et cetera, mm -hmm. uh, I just knew that it was something, A, it's kind of out of our wheelhouse, because it's not, it's not going, it was not ever meant to be on our channel, but it's one yeah. of the videos I'm the most proud of being a part of for the entirety of Extra Credits, because the script you wrote uh, with, with the, including the voices of the kids, like, I, 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 it's obviously crafted to, uh, make comfortable and help children sort of go through the entire process as you described mm -hmm. but also like i had no idea just as an adult who had never been involved yeah. like that close down to it like it's so helpful for everybody and mm -hmm. uh i i knew that when when jeff told me that and when i saw the script i was like oh yeah like this is this is a thing that we need to do uh it yeah i loved it yeah, I know. You guys did a wonderful job. We were mind blown at how quick it started moving once you were able to have the script and the voices and even all the sound recordings we did of our actual radiation machine and putting a recording device in when our CAT scan machine turned on. So the kids are actually hearing the noises that they will then hear. So there will be no surprises when they're first coming through and making their own radiation mask and what that experience will be like. Yeah. Again, I do have to shout out Scott DeWitt also did the art for that episode and he was eternally thankful, as was I, just running the sort of production side of things for the tons of beautifully organized reference photos yes. and things. We had to be very much more specific than we yeah. usually have especially with medical equipment. Yeah, and, we don't uh, usually draw medical equipment. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, he was very thankful for that, as was I. Uh, that made the process go so, so much mm -hmm. smoother. So, yeah. I've heard I, a lot of uh, positive feedback from our physicians in the clinic as well, who are amazed oh, at how <laughs> detailed and realistic those images are. Um, and I've actually I had the opportunity with with the world we're in right now, so many of our consults have been taking place over video appointments. And so I've been talking to families who are local and also out of state who are preparing to come to Ann Arbor for their child's radiation and being able to email this very approachable, friendly explanation of their child's upcoming treatment to these families and they can watch it at home with the kid and also with the brothers and sisters and whoever else. Um, it's been very helpful, for sure. Well, and I think we always talk about gaming and technology and all these things in children's hospitals. And so when JJ mentioned it to us, to understand a child's roadmap of what's going to happen to them in a hospital and doing an animated video where they feel like it was made for them, for Child's Play was like, this isn't something we've done before, but I think it also takes their their roadmap to the next level, right? And how can we do this again or look at doing this for other disciplines that can then be shared with other children's hospitals using technology? Definitely. And we tried to keep it general enough so that it could be usable for any child going through any radiation clinic. Um, so not only it's, it's based in our Michigan Medicine Clinic here in Ann Arbor, but it's definitely moldable for any clinic. Yeah, yeah, it was, and it was, it was, a, I th again, I think what was really cool was the kids' involvement, and then the fact that the cartoon itself is kind of, I think when people are thinking like animation to educate, they think little kids, but the way that the cartoon is made, the style, and even the performers, our actors or mm -hmm. um, voice actors, you know, they're, they're of various ages um, from different walks of life and they all, um, so it feels like an adult would learn just as much from this cartoon or this animation as mm -hmm. a child or a I teenager. And a teenager wouldn't feel like, oh, this is belittling to me. Like, I'm too smart for this. Like, right. no, there's some really good stuff in there and it's kind of fun to watch and it's better than reading a pamphlet or, you know. Like and you just touched on another 
big goal of this cartoon too, that we do often work with adult patients who might be a little anxious coming up for their treatment or who have young families at home. So this is a great tool that they can also share, help prepare themselves, but their children as well. Yeah, and I, have a, I actually have a quote from Vera. Um, she was one of the actresses and she said, her favorite part is that it will help other kids in the future and help explain they don't need to be scared. Is that, is that something, Kristen, that you feel like that's the big thing, kids are scared and to just to mm -hmm. hear from another kid, is that? Definitely, that was uh, what was so important to me to include the, our own patients' voices and to involve them even when I wrote the script, I had them read it, I had their parents read it. You know, is this true to what your experience was? And to um, have that buy-in from somebody who has walked through those halls and had that treatment um, was so important. Yeah, and, and then Vera's mother, Emily, said, I would say the project empowered Vera to feel like she could make a difference. It allowed her to give back to child life and to future fighters in hopes that they would feel supported and encouraged. What it did, it gave her a voice. For that, we will be forever grateful. Kristen and her vision for this was invaluable. And I believe if we could find a way to have other kids talk about their journeys and their voices, this should serve as an example of what empowering fighters to give back can do. Really, really strong stuff coming from a parent who's watched her daughter go through a lot and to feel mm -hmm. that way after all of her daughter's hospital experiences, I think is pretty amazing. No kidding. Every cool. time you guys get me, every time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, no. This was, I mean, we're, yeah. we really, we're very, you know, we're very good at making a very certain kind of thing, but getting to go out of our wheelhouse and, you know, have some fun and do some good is really just i'll have to say personally satisfying yeah. and i know i heard from a lot of members of the team same kind of thing everybody who got to work on this was really thrilled to have gotten to work on this one and um yeah it's just we're we were very excited about it we're we're now kind of looking around we're like hey we want to do one of these again <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of child life specialists at Matt who would love to have their departments represented. <laughs> There's a lot of procedures yeah. that could be explained. <laughs> yes, uh, Kristen's I'm, quite the envy right now. I was going to say, you, you got my number. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, and we're, we're getting close to the end of our time. Does, does anyone have anything else they want to kind of like last thoughts or anything that they want to share about their experience? Um. I mean, I'll just sort of say sort of a blanket. Uh, well, to start, thank you to everybody on this panel. I mean, yeah. we, Jeff and I, you know, we, we work on extra credits and we get to talk about a lot of different things, but by far, uh, both Because Games Matter, working with Child Play, the hospital video, like they have been the things that have been uh, in, a, in a current time that is draining for everyone. Uh, personally, these projects have been um, the most rejuvenative to me. Uh, and it's so nice to, I don't know, just thanks for inviting us on this panel and, and letting us sort of talk with you through this journey because I, I, I hope that not only these videos themselves, but us talking about it and talking to everyone in chat right now, uh, that this will sort of be another step in helping spark more people to donate and volunteer and, and become uh, specialists and, you know, all, all of that jazz. So thank you very much for having us. Yeah. Yeah. And th thank you guys so much. Like child's play, everyone who supports child's play, everyone who supports, uh, who goes and watches extra credits. Um, I, 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 I don't want to speak too much for, for, Kristen and Connor, but just personally, like, again, we haven't talked at all about what it's been like working in a hospital during the pandemic. Um, but I will say that um, working on this project for me was like the first, like, oh, this is my job again. Like, this is this is what I was doing, having this exciting project, working with other people, collaborating to do something. Um, it, it was the first thing throughout the pandemic that felt normal again to me. Um, and then to be able to, for it to actually work and to go as fast and as smooth as, as possible, it just speaks to the professionalism of all of you. 
Um, but also like I, I even even just for our staff, I don't I don't think you guys are aware of like the dramatic impact it had for us, like just morale wise to like keep going and being like, yeah, we can still provide all this awesome stuff for our kids and there's still groups out there supporting us and um and do something that just feels normal. So so thank all of you for helping us like make that possible. Um, but don't you think in a way this created that moment of like now it is COVID, we not post COVID yet, but that right. we're able to meet the patient where we're at, where they're at. And I think that gamers have always been so great about giving back and rallying behind causes, but to see their funds in action in a way like this through the generosity of, of extra credit with their series and then this in addition and child's play with raising money, but what you guys do right every yeah. day in children's hospitals is Definitely. finding ways to meet kids where they're at. And so any gamer on here, um, any any family listening during PACS and we're here, it's, there's so many ways to give your time, talent, and treasure to help children's hospitals, to help kids share their stories, um, and really create such a lasting impact. Definitely. Like JJ was saying, um, it's been a little more challenging to be as effective with our work and supporting families throughout the pandemic, and this is a tool that allows me to be as productive and efficient with teaching these kids and preparing their families for what to expect where they are if they're at home or if they're with me in the clinic yeah and i'll i'll add on top of that that video games and technology are one of the few things that we can actually like clean well and that can still connect all of our patients to each other through the internet through wi-fi like the same way all of us gamers are staying connected just by playing whatever our favorite game is right now like that's how our kids are staying connected that's how we, we were, we were prepared in some ways that other hospitals weren't because we've been trying to connect our kids through gaming all the way up until the pandemic. And we continue to use those same practices after the pandemic, the gaming just leads to that. So uh, continue to support your local hospitals, continue to support uh, groups like uh, Child's Play. And if you're curious, you can reach out to wherever your local hospital is. Um, we, are wrapping this up, but we do have a, on one of our last slides um, kind of information like links to different groups. You can see all of the videos that we talked about. You can um, connect with Child's Play, Extra Credits, us, um, and see how you can help. But also, I just really encourage you wherever you live, support your local your local hospital and find out ways that you can do that. Whether it's through time or money or just giving them a thumbs up, letting them know you care. And I, I think with that, we're we're going to wrap it up. Thanks, everybody. Right. We appreciate you all. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thank Happy you. Packs. Happy packs. Happy packs. But wait, one more thing. If you want to see our radiation video, just stick around. Thanks. Hey there, my name's Matt, this is Zoe, and these are our friends. Hi, my name is Alec. I am Vera. And I am Alex. And we're going to tell you about the Radiation Oncology Clinic. And Alec, Vera, and Alex are going to tell you about their experiences with it. It's great because radiation medicine gives us super healing powers. We all have special building blocks, kind of like Legos, in our bodies called cells. Just like Legos, cells help build all the different parts of our body. Sometimes these cells or building blocks get sick and can't work the way they're supposed to. Radiation helps shrink and remove these unhealthy cells so your healthy cells can keep building and growing. The best part about radiation is that you can't feel it. It's just like having your picture taken. That's right. But before you begin, you'll meet a whole team of people who will help support you through your treatment. First is your radiation oncologist, who's a doctor that knows a lot about helping people using radiation therapy. You will also meet a child life specialist. She will explain each step of your therapy and help you have fun every day at the clinic. Everyone in your radiation team is happy to answer your questions so you feel comfortable and prepared. Next, you'll have a simulation appointment. This is when your radiation team will give you a CAT scan. <coughs> <laughs> no, Zoe, not that kind of CAT scan. This kind of CAT scan. And maybe an MRI. Both of these machines take special pictures of you, and they help your radiation team find the sick cells that you want to get rid of. To make these pictures, you have a very important job. 
You must keep very, very still, like a statue. While the machine is taking pictures of you, your radiation team will make you some things that will help you not move. If the sick cells are in your head or by your neck, your radiation team will help you make a mask that fits your head perfectly. First, you'll lie down on the bed that goes into the CAT scan, and then a couple people from your radiation team will place the warm, stretchy mask over your head and button it in place. Now, while making your mask, your job is to hold still so that it copies the exact shape of your head. And then after a few minutes, it cools and looks just like you. I like to pretend I am a superhero when I wear my mask. They even painted it like Spider-Man for me. If the cells are in a different part of your body, you and your team might make a special bed that helps keep your body still. It's made from a very cool liquid foam. You'll lie down on the CAT scan bed. Then your radiation team will move the foam around your body. And again, your job here is to keep your body very still. After a few minutes, the foam will rise up around your sides, and it kind of feels like you're laying on warm pizza dough. Then it will be a perfect copy of you. I like to put stickers and pictures on mine. Once you've made your bed or mask, your team will use the CAT scan or MRI machines to take pictures of just you. This means your radiation team has to step out for a moment, but as soon as your pictures are done, everyone comes right back in the room with you. Remember to hold still so your pictures turn out crystal clear. Your mask and bed can help you. You'll get some colorful marks and stickers on your skin. Your mask or bed to help your team always get you in the right spot. That's right, Alec. It's important that you're in just the right spot for both these pictures and your radiation treatment. After your simulation, your radiation team will take a look at the pictures and create your own radiation plan. This plan will be special just for you, showing what type of radiation you need and where you need it. Then you'll come back to the clinic for your first day of radiation treatment. You'll lie down the same way you did for your simulation, but this time in a different room. And you'll use your mask or your bed if you made one. And your team will make sure all of your stickers and marker marks are in just the right spot. Then they'll move the radiation machine around you and give you your radiation medicine. Your radiation team will have to step out of the room for a minute. Don't worry, though. Your team can still see you and talk to you over the speaker in the room. They can play your favorite music or the child life specialist can read your favorite book to you. You can also bring your own music, blanket, or toy to hold during the therapy. Remember, when you're getting your radiation treatment, your job is to hold still. Because holding still helps the radiation machine go right to the spot in your body that needs it while leaving the other spots on your body alone. And you might see or hear the radiation machine moving around you in a circle. But it will never touch you. You won't feel the radiation at all. It's invisible. You might smell a weird smell or see a little light for a few seconds. After just a few minutes, you're all done for the day. Then after your first day of radiation treatment, you can go home to play, eat a snack, or take a nap. Some kids even choose to go back to school that day if they feel like it. Now most people will come back for radiation treatment many times because this helps the medicine work a little bit each day to get rid of those cells and bumps that you don't want. But your team will always work hard to make the clinic fun for you. When you're at the clinic, you can spend time doing all kinds of fun stuff like making crafts and listening to audiobooks. I like to play with video games or just relax while I wait. Then on your last day of treatment, your team will cheer you on as you get to ring the victor's bell to celebrate finishing your radiation therapy. I really look forward to ringing it. I can't wait for you to ring it too. Now you know what to expect during your radiation therapy. Thanks so much to Alec, Vera, and Alex for helping me and Zoe out today. And thank you for watching. We can't wait to hear you ring that victor's bell. Bye everyone.